Okay, now we're into the surface factor. Uh, this little guy, the, the scum dog, I, I love him to bits. He's uh, got a very popular uh, body shape, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, you have to do him this shape. It's the only way that the that a lure uh, will swim like this is if it has that very uh, traditional walk the dog style, belly down uh, look about it. And it's got a tiny little cup uh, just where my fingers are. Um, under the toe point there. One single weight in the rear just to sit him down in the water like that, which is you know, fairly important for a lure like this because a lot of fish will eat this just as it's sitting there on the surface. Get away from me, March fly. <laughs> They're biting that bejesus out of me. Okay, so when this guy's uh, sitting in the water, just his eyes are poking out essentially like that. Now what that does is it, it makes it really easy for a fish to suck it under. Um, what you'll find is a lot of fish that aren't really good at, uh, at eating stuff from the surface, like a brim, I mean, they're not the greatest surface eaters. They don't have the right shaped mouth, they don't have the right lips for it. Um, you know, they don't have a big sort of sucker open mouth factor thing going on, so they're, they're not the greatest at it. Um, so that makes this guy really easy for a brim to slurp under because there's not much buoyancy. So for what amount of suction they do create, they can actually suck this lure down really, really easily. Okay, so uh, sub dog look, at the end of the day, there's only a couple of retrieves we can do with this guy. Um, but one of them, the walk the dog, it's a classic. I'm going to show you how it works. Alrighty. Oh, talk about line management skills. Old Roy just uh, having a I made a ham sandwich of it here today. Oh, here we go. Good. Okay, so walk the dog. Um, I've, uh, I've reported it before as being uh, like like rubbing your belly and patting your head at the same time because you've got to do two different things at once, which is uh, actually not unusual to an angler because uh, quite often we need to do something different with our rod hand than we do with our winding hand, okay? And literally, if this isn't the easiest surface lure to get the walk the dog action out of, I will go pee for tiggy every day of the week because literally, I'm doing it. Shake and retrieve. Look at the rod tip. This is how much the rod tip's working. Can you see the rod tip? Probably not. The rod tip's just doing that, and all I'm doing after that is winding the handle. Oh my god. Does it get any easier? I don't think so. I'm gonna wind this guy back in and give you another look at that. Pump him out, engage, and just nice and slowly with the handle. Oh, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, like a like a soldier doing a march, straight up the gut. Fantastic. Look at that. He's coming back like he's looking for his school. Whoa, where did they go? Whoa, I've lost them all. Oh dear. Boom! Gets punched by something. Awesome. All right, yeah, that's gold. Now, let me tell you a little something, people. Fact of the matter is, all you guys fish with fluorocarbon leaders, yeah? Which is fair, that's cool. Like, you know, it's, it's good stuff. In clear water, bright sunny days like this, brilliant, fluorocarbon is by far uh, the reader's choice. Thing is, fluorocarbon sinks, yeah? Now, if you're using a, you know, any sort of polyethylene fiber line, or a fire line, or any one of the millions of braids, that floats, that's good, that's cool. We can deal with that, that floats every day of the week. We love that. But your fluorocarbon sinks like a stone and you're trying to use a surface lure. So you've got two meters of something that sinks on the front of something that's meant to float. Now so many people have hassled me, yelled at me, emailed me, tweeted me, Facebook, everything, and I'm sick of it. And I say exactly the same thing to you all. Don't use fluorocarbon with surface lures because it drags their nose down. You've got to use nylon and that nylon needs to be treated with something that resembles this. 
So floatant or silicon, any sort of silicon based product is the key. You really need that leader material to float. It's essential. It can't go subsurface. Even if it's just under an inch, it's going to pull the nose of your lure down an inch and then your lure's not going to swim properly. These things are so finely tuned, it's crazy. Like only just its eyeballs are poking out of the water. That's how much buoyancy it has. And you will ruin that buoyancy by using fluorocarbon leader. Because as you're pulling the fluorocarbon through the water, it's cut through the surface meniscus, and then it's below surface, and then it pulls the nose of the lure down, and it's over. All right? So, seriously, here was the program. Serious. Back to the retreat. Okay, so now you can see I'm using the um, blood python today. Uh, I really like this rod because it's so it's so easy to get that tip shaking. Like the blood python's the, uh, the the more parabolic of, of the range. You could also use the death adder. Death adder again, another favourite of mine. Um, the majority of fish that I catch on this lure, they're fairly small. I like the action of the blood python. You know, it feels like I'm catching a monster. Um, if you were going to attack bigger things or we're in an area where say you might be brimming where you know there are jacks um, then the death adder is by far going to be the uh, the pick of the rod because it's got so much uh, low down power so light tip heaps of power um, e either either rod you really it needs to be a light tip rod it's got to be able to uh, 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 it's got to be able to do that really really easily just with your hand because you'll be doing that every retreat Every retrieve has to have the shake in it. You don't want to get RSI or you know tennis elbow or anything like that um, by having to wave too heavy a rod. So make sure it's a, a light action rod like the like the blood python or the death adder, and you can't go too far wrong. So just a gentle shake and retrieve. Oh my god, my nana could retrieve this. She's dead. You get it? That's what I'm saying. Too easy, camp easy. Uh, one last retrieve that I suppose you could do with this guy is just a rod tip up high and uh, wind it in for your whiting fans, for your salmon fans, for your tailor fans, your small kingies, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, good. Like, as if you couldn't do it. You know, I shouldn't have even done that. I did. So you can see also I'm using mono. I've, uh, I've got the little Fluger, the, uh, the 9525. Um, and uh, I've got the spare spool on because the main spool has braid and then my spare spools all have mono. Um, but this is nylon, this is strength uh, magnetin. I think it's probably the best nylon fishing line you can use. It is so incredibly durable and tough. It ties a cracking good knot and it is abrasive resistant as, uh, as, you, can, as you can get. It's just brilliant line, it really is. Uh, it's, it's super skinny obviously because it's called magnetin so it casts like a champion. Um, you need a little bit of line management skills to make sure it doesn't get tangled, you know, but uh, aside from that, this, this line is brilliant and it's clear, it is crystal clear, so, you know, it's as good as fluorocarbon, but it doesn't sink with your surface lure.